Great to have him back, of course, longtime voice of the Twins, uh, Twin City native, and he says hello. Dick, welcome. Nice to chat. How are you today, pal? Okay? We're doing fine. I just checked the lake out here. There's only two inches of ice on the lake right now, so you're going to have to wait a week to you know, you know, check that box on your bucket list to come to Minnesota and go ice fishing. Uh, I've been there for many a big game in Super Bowls that can be cold. I'm well aware of that. Dick, good job. All right, let's talk about the big picture first. They haven't won a playoff game in a long time. Uh, you know, they got picked off by Houston. They didn't hit rubber uh, ramifications. I'm sure a lot of uh, – I know it's a short year. You kind of throw it out to a degree. But they did lose twice to Houston there in a the miniseries. Get thoughts on that first. Go ahead. Well, they got really good starting pitching in each game. Kenta Maeda and Jose Barrios gave them a real good chance. Each went five innings, gave up one run total in those first ten innings of the two games. Uh, but you're right. You know, they weren't able to hit. This was hardly a concern for this uh, team. Uh, going into the 2020 season, they weren't able last year in the abbreviated season to produce offensively like they did in 2019, but they still got an awfully good core that led to uh, ultimately uh, the other day, Eddie Rosario being non tender. Now, are you, um, listen, is, is this a black cloud over the organization, this long playoff drought, Dick, in your eyes? Is this something you think this regime it thinks about? I know the fans do. How about the regime, most importantly? Do they look at it from a standpoint, let's have good regular seasons, eventually we break through, or do they look at it as, you know what, this is getting to be ridiculous, 18 straight playoff losses? Which way? All of that. I think, I think it's frustration felt uh, throughout the fan base, throughout the front office. You know, the front office has changed. Derek Falvey and Thad Levine came in a, a few years ago, and and they're winless in the postseason. So one of the things that would help, and, you know, everybody has to deal with injuries and this year illnesses and all that, but maybe the most important player on this Twins team, in my opinion, is Byron Buxton. And he has not been able to play uh, much at all in the, the recent postseason uh, formats that the Twins have been in. And if they can ever get this guy healthy to play a full regular season and then be at the top of his game in the postseason, I think you've seen enough of him to know he really can be a difference maker in the postseason. A hundred percent. We know he can catch the ball. That's for sure. Rosario, how shocked were you? Is that a shock? Or I know they got a lot of guys in their farm system. They have offense, but Rosario is a good player, and they let him go. That surprised you, Dick? Not so much, uh, and it's it's surprising to to say this because wherever Eddie goes, uh, if he plays a full season, if we play a full season in 2021. I think you can pretty much uh, you know, count on him hitting 30 home runs, 100 runs batted in. But the Twins have you know, a really deep system, particularly in corner outfield spots. They got two future all-stars, a lot of people feel, in Alex Kirilov and Trevor Larnick. Kirilov made it a, his debut in the playoff game against Houston last year. Uh, so I kind of liken it to where the Twins were about 20 years ago when they had a really good catcher and a really durable catcher in A.J. Pierzynski, but they knew that Joe Maurer was coming, so they had to make room for him. Now, this is a different mechanism, of course, when you non-tender somebody, but I really think they're committed to getting Kirilov and maybe even Larnick some playing time at the big league level this coming season. All right, interesting answer there. Fair enough. Donaldson, can they ever get a full year out of him? He's had these calf issues forever. They took a chance. They gave him a big contract and not enough there last year and did not play against Houston in that mini series. What's up with him? Well, the calf, of course, uh, uh, crippled his season, no pun intended. Uh, he re injured it early in the season. Uh, what little the Twins saw of him, of course, uh, they were encouraged that, that, you know, they would have him for a few years, but he's another player that needs to be on the field. And uh, the, the calf injury resurfaced again. There were some reasons for that in terms of, uh, you know, we, we had a game here against uh, Cleveland. We weren't even sure if we were going to play until right before game time because the Cardinals had just left town uh, and had their COVID outbreak. And so there was some doubt as to whether we were going to play. And wouldn't you know what, Josh played and, and tweaked the calf right away, and it really bothered him the rest of the year. Hopefully with the offseason, he'll be ready to go come spring training. Trevor May, uh, the Mets get him. Uh, obviously, that's a loss. That bullpen give me a little rundown on losing Trevor May. What do you see there? That's going to be a big loss and a big addition for the Mets. He'll be reunited with Jeremy Hefner, who was a pitching coach with the Twins here a couple of years ago. Trevor's got great swing and miss stuff, and as you know, that's – that's a, a commodity these days, if not the top commodity in the bullpen, to get swings and misses. 
He's got a tremendous arsenal of pitches. He was a great pitcher for the Twins, really evolved as, as one of the more reliable guys the last couple of years. That is a big loss for a Twins bullpen that I think was underrated last year. It was pretty good last year. We'll see how they patch that hole. My well, interesting. And last thing, Dick, how about the back end of that rotation? Big three is fine. Barry Olson, obviously, Maeda. You mentioned those two at the top. And then Pineda had some good moments. He would have pitched game three good moments last year, too, when he came back off, uh, you know, multiple issues with suspensions and what have you. They could use a fourth or a fifth starter. They can use another pitcher. I know it's not going to be Trevor Barrow. Where do they go there to fill that need? Let me hear. Well, they may re, uh, circle back and bring back Jake Odorizzi when he was healthy. He was really, really good. He was an all-star pitcher. They saw just a little bit of Rich Hill, and, of course, he's another year older. Uh, he might be in the mix for consideration to come back. Homer Bailey, too, had some injury issues. But I think you're looking at a top three right now that the Twins feel pretty comfortable with. What we saw them do last year is establish a lot of depth, and as it turned out, even in a 60 game season they needed that depth with homer bailey and rich hill and and some others they have got some young prospects they might consider promoting into the rotation but there are going to be a lot of people out there a lot of veterans and i would imagine that the twins will probably kind of uh, take the template they used last year where they filled out the rotation with some veteran guys and hopefully some veteran guys who have some postseason experience as well